A lot of people think they lose their balance because they're getting older and they're losing muscle. But we showed in one study that it's not that, it, that's part of it. But the biggest part of it is you're, use, you're missing that brainwave, the SMR brainwave. Once you train to that brainwave, people had better stability, more strength, and uh, better cognitive repair. By doing martial arts and primarily uh, Tai Chi, which is easy movements, that you can also reconnect the brain. I remember when I was growing up in China, they were always saying how if you're a little kid, so you can play piano and become smarter or you can do martial art and become smarter. You know, each one teach you, teaches you discipline and does something for your brain. Hello, Dr. Patrick Porter. I'm so excited to have you. You are just one of those amazing human beings. You are making so much contribution to the world by the technology you bring and just by the sheer goodness of who you are as a person. So I'm just really honored to have you here. Well, I appreciate that. I love uh, working with people like yourself. That's the kind of people we want to surround ourselves with, right? People who are raising up humanity instead of trying to take as much as you can from it. So that's what we're all about. Yeah, absolutely. That's the mission. Um, so I've been using BrainTap uh, technology that you, you brought to the world for probably the past um, six months or so. And I definitely love what it's doing for me. And initially I was very curious, of course, when you're using this device um, to enhance brain health, you know, I was curious about uh, just how it works and why, why do you, why is this light shining in my ears or in my eyes and, and the sound is making, like, how does that improve my health? So I want to kind of uh, go in from how this come up, came about and why you designed the system. And so maybe you can first um, talk about your journey a little bit and how you even came to the point of designing BrainTap. Sure. Yeah, we can go back in time a little bit before you were born, probably, <laughs> uh, or just about the, about the time you were born, maybe. The, uh, I was 12 years old and I, I had to, I, my dad just got help with his alcoholism. And he decided to train us all in a process called the Silva method, which was a, a way to relax using technology. And they use technology in the form of a cassette. <laughs> so, and also a metronome and some other mechanical tools that we would use to relax the body. And the whole thing was about how do we get the body to relax and warm up the hands? Because that used to be the way we did it. Hand temperature, respiration. When your hands are warm, you actually, we now know that there's alpha activity. So we were doing a lot of biofeedback and that, but I started recording my own sessions when I was 12. And I just felt that, you know, my dad, because he was a chronic alcoholic, I didn't hear a lot of four letter words that were love. You know, I heard a lot of other ones. So, so, you know, when my dad was speaking, even though he got help, I couldn't make, bring that terms in my mind, but it really helped. And then one thing led to the other. And I just, I went to school for electronics. When people go, how did you, you you got this degree in psychology, what are you doing with this piece of electronics? I went to school for electronics because like most, uh, most sons, I was not going to do what my dad did. You know, that was my brother, Michael could do that. I wasn't going to do that. And, but I was helping my dad through college. Um, when I was going through college, I would help him with seminars because he owned uh, the territory of lower Michigan. And so I would go give seminars and uh, he just asked me, so do you want to give part of the seminar? And I started doing it in front of the group and I, and I liked it. And I, you know, I didn't think I would do that. You know, I, I was never the kind of person that was in front of uh, people. I was in sports, but I was more like, I did it by my actions, not by my words, you know, that kind of thing. But then my dad started letting me do more and more of the seminar. I started liking it. And then I thought, you know, even though I have an undergraduate in electronics, I should go to school for psychology because he also had a clinic. You know, he, he worked with people with uh, mostly addictions and things like that. And so because he had overcome addictions, he was kind of the go-to person for that. But then uh, a series of events happened actually that we probably don't have time to go into here, but uh, I went to a show in Vegas and this is where I think the universe kind of answered prayers because uh, I ran into a company with a, a device called the SILS, a sensory input learning system. It was a big machine. It was about the size of a microwave. And when I got on it, it used lights, but it was like it used woodworking goggles. It was really, you know, we're talking about in the, you know, 80s. And this was 1985. And, you know, earphones and you're laying on the floor. They didn't even have zero gravity chairs, anything like we use now. But I had a trip like you wouldn't believe and it. And for me to because I had meditated for years, even before then, I had this and I said, I want one of those. And they said, you're in luck. It's only ten thousand dollars. Well, 
like I barely had enough money to get to Vegas. You know, that wasn't, that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> but then the, the, as I said, the universe was conspiring with me to get, to get, make this happen because during that event, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Robinson, the guy who invented the cells died. And, um, when I went back to the booth, they said, you know, the, this guy made the sills, but we don't even know how it works. His wife said he didn't leave anybody the plans. And I said, well, where are you going after this? And they, they looked at me and they said, well, we're going to Scottsdale. And I said, I have an office in Scottsdale because I, my dad was working in Phoenix. and I was working in Scottsdale. And I said, come down to my clinic. I said, I have a degree in electronics. Let me see if I can get this thing working. And one thing led to another. And I helped to create the first portable light and sound machine because it was a prototype of this big unit that was $10,000. Mm. When, when I made the smaller one, I said, you know, we could use this. And they're like, what do you mean? So like the old story goes, like you're building things in your garage. We were building things in my back office from a company here in the United States called Radio Shack. We'd go get all the pieces. Mm -hmm. we, we would burn the, we, they had what they call it an improv burner. So we bur burnt the mechanical chip. We did everything in house and we built probably the first 500, um, MC, we called it MC Square then. So then uh, I'm the last man standing because I was a young guy then, you know, when we started. And now I'm the old guy. But the um, what happened was the, um, you know, everybody else kind of left the business. But to me, it was more than just a business. To me, it was this was a lifestyle I wanted to teach people. And for me, what, because what I was the machine troubled. do? I'm sorry to interrupt. What did the machine do exactly? And how? Well, the machine did the lights for the eyes, what they call retinal flashing. And it did tones in the ears, but you had to manually do this. Hmm. So there was, it was not, it was like you took a technician. So you'd be, you'd be watching their breathing. You would be measuring their hand temperature. And as they relaxed, you would change the frequencies. And so it was all done by hand. It was very labor intensive. So not only did it cost $10,000, you had to manually do it. And that was before the, what they called the EEPROM chip, which was the first programmable chip that came out. And we could then program what I was doing when I was pushing the buttons to make the lights flash you know so it made a big difference and we didn't know if it was going to work or not but people went right to it and you know like in 89 I think you know that we got an award the best new gadget of the year at the consumer electronics show and we didn't even know what to expect I mean when we arrived it was like aliens because uh you know there was no cell phones there was no cds uh, there was, I mean, everything was done with cassettes. It was really bulky. And I mean, if I look at it now, it's really corny, but you know, that's the way everything looks back in the eighties <laughs> when you look at them, you know, today and everything's just evolved. And I I've been in this, you know, for me, I feel, I still feel like I don't even work. I just get to talk about things I love all day and, you know, communicate with people and, and help, you know, turn the light on for people. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I heard some patients were commenting that back in, I don't know if they were saying 70s or 80s, they have something similar like that. Is, is that the, what you were working on? We were the first company to make one. There was nobody else who did this. We, we invented the whole space. Okay. So yeah, it was in the 80s and we did a lot. Um, when I, I first was going to conferences, you know, kind of like what I do today, go and speak to doctors. But then I started a franchise company. So I kind of was disappeared for about 27 years mm -hmm. and ran my franchise company. Then when I sold that, I, I reemerged and, you know, got back out there, you know, doing what I'm doing now because the, I wanted to get it more out into the world. At first, when it was so novel that nobody knew about it, we had to have it in the clinic because we didn't really sell the, the equipment to people. We did if they were patients, but we didn't just have it available for everyone. Yeah. So so just people have a, a better understanding of exactly what do these devices do that, you know, now it's called brain tap. Like, what does it do and how has it improved from what it was? Yeah. So back in the eighties, we were looking at sound. First of all, uh, we didn't know as much as we do now about sound back then. Now we know that our ears are processing 25,000 pieces of information a second. So when somebody says they don't hear very well, that's not true at all. The brain hears everything. It's the filtering system. So, you know, and we know that a lot of times uh, hearing loss is psychosomatic, you know, that just as an example, they might not want to hear what's going on around them. So they, you know, they shut down that hearing. So we were looking at sound and sound has a big effect on the brain because, you know, it's, it's one of our most primitive, you know, uh, it's a second behind sense of smell, you know, as far as primitive reflexes that we have with our environment. So when the sound comes in, we know that 
even back then, there was a company called uh, uh, Hemisync was the name of the, they're still around today. Um, uh, Monroe is the name, it's the Monroe Institute. And we licensed their technology at first because they had a lot of science around how to balance the brain and do these things. So we were doing it with that. And then when we, we I said, well, because we also have eyes, right? We have two ears, two eyes. What if we use that same philosophy of how a binaural works is we would put a 200 Hertz frequency in one ear and a 210 in the other. And the brain actually hears a phantom sound of 10. And then what our brain does at the very core, it's always scanning its environment going, wow, is this a safe place for me? What's going on? And it does that by frequency, by the vibration of things. You know, when that tsunami hit that island or, you know, when the tsunami hit, everybody goes, where are all the animals? Hmm. The animals left days before that <laughs> because the animals are in tune with their environment. Everything is connected here. It's not just uh, a Disney movie, you know, where they say the circle of life. Everything is connected like beads on a string. But unfortunately, we get distracted and we get doing other things and then we don't tune into our environment like the animals do. So, you know, the animals know when it's going to have a storm, when there's going to be, you know, natural disasters. They, but we don't because we're out of tune. But if we, if we get in tune, what we, what we decided to do is what do people do when they relax? Well, most people like to go to the ocean, a beach, a mountaintop, you know, they, they like to go to these places out in nature. Now, the reason the frequencies we use with BrainTap are all Earth frequencies. So if you and I, Dr. Joy, were on your spaceship coming toward Earth, right, and we look at the Earth, the Earth itself would have a frequency between 0 0.5 and 100. That's the same as our brain, 0 0.5 to 100. So the planet has a frequency like the brain. So when we're on the planet, like if we're in a, around a volcano, it's gonna be around hundred. It's gonna tell us to run, you know, as fast as we can away from that, right? But if we're on a mountaintop meditating like the gurus do, we're gonna be at 7.8 Hertz frequency. That happens to be the Schumann frequency. So we're gonna use sound as a pulse frequency to do that when the hearing. Now, the problem is what we, what we discovered along the way here, on, along the journey, it wasn't right away, was in 2014, we were started working with a group called NORA, the Neuro Ophthalmology Research Association. And because they're wondering why we have lights in the ears, what's going on there? Well, we didn't know that the eyes actually are 30% of your hearing. So when, you, when you're looking out in the world, like if you're not looking at somebody and somebody's talking two tables over, you can't hear them. But as soon as you turn your head and you see them, you can hear them because our brain's picking up all that data but our primitive brain only, you know, we're only looking like this. Now, if a loud noise or a, an animal growled behind us, we would, it would get our attention. Because so it's that's, not just from watching their lips. It's just by orienting the vision in that vicinity. Right. They've actually, we've actually shown in studies that when you close your eyes without stimulus, like the, the brain tap, retinal flashing, your brain shuts off 30 to 40% of the brain function because the brain's always looking for ways to offload energy. It's like, it's an energy hog. So it's taking 20% of the energy of the body. It's saying, oh, we don't need to power up those, the circuits for seeing because the eyes are closed. But that when you meditate or you go into these altered states, <clears throat> you want to stay awake. So your body gets the benefit. So what the, what the lights are doing in the same way that we're doing the phantom sounds, now we're going to do the phantom light with the eyes. So we're going to match what's happening in the right ear with the left eye and vice versa. That even though when somebody looks at it, they might think they're flashing at the same, but they're not. But, you know, when you think about anywhere between 18 cycles per second to four cycles per second, unless you're very sensitive, you're not going to figure that out with your eyes, you know, with your eyes open. But the your brain does. Your brain knows all those things. So then what we what we said was the brain needs energy. So, right. We talked about that a minute ago. So how do we get energy into the brain? That's where retinal flashing comes in. Because our eyes aren't just attached to the brain, our eyes are brain matter. So if we want to do something called photobiomodulation, which um, ho hopefully your listeners, I'll give them a little course here, just so you know, what happens in our bodies, this happens with all light, not just brain tap, but even the house lights, the sunlight, everything, the cells of your body have something called chromoforms. These are little batteries at the cellular, and, and what they do is they hold a charge, and then when, when the cell needs energy, it goes gets the energy. 
Well, that makes ATP is, is what most people would know. So we want to deliver energy to the brain without going through the digestive system. We can put it in through photaic energy because they now know actually that we're light beings. As bizarre as that sounds, it's not a, it's not a metaphysical concept. Every cell of your body through biophotaic exchange is upgrading or downgrading your, your epigenetics. You're, you're not your genes, but you are your environment, your food, your thoughts. All of those things are changing every 40 seconds. So if we want to show up as our best self, we need energy. If not, just like if we were to uh, play the game telephone, which is where you whisper something in somebody's ear, if every time you whispered, it got a little quieter and quieter, by the time it got to the last person, you wouldn't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Well, that's also what happens in the body. We need to have energy so that as we do the work, the brain needs energy to, to change and do the work. So we're going to put it through there. In 2014, we started talking with our doctors. We have quite a number of doctors using brain tap about over 2000, which you're one of them, of course. And so they use lasers, right? And, and I said, what are you doing with the lasers? Because they were lasering the ears. And there's all these meridians in the ears. So I started researching Dr. Uh, Nogier, Nogier, however you want to say it. And he what he said is there's seven frequencies that they could put into the ear. And then somebody started doing it with lasers. They started using laser acupuncture. And I said, you know, I'm going to do some research. How much photaic energy does a laser, a, this was back then, there's really powerful lasers now. I own three of them that are more powerful than what we had back then. But what we wanted to do was, what if we could put laser, well, we could put enough photaic energy, just like getting a laser treatment in both ears without the doctor having to stand there with the, you know, the laser in the ear or an assistant, you know, what might happen. And what we started finding was that we could pulse that light. So the light in the ears looks solid, but it's actually every two minutes, it's changing to another nosier frequency. So the body is getting tuned up by the ears. Now the ears also have a little magical part. When I talked about photobiomodulation, what happens in the ears, all of the blood in the ears, all the blood in the body, I should say, goes through the ears every 40 seconds or so, depending upon how much cartilage and things. But the rest of the body, it's like 15 seconds. No, I'm sorry. It takes about 45 seconds through the rest of the body and about four minutes through the ears. So when you when so it's a great place to what we call blood dope. We can we can put a lot of light there. We can shine the light. Those the hemoglobin absorbs that light, circulates through the body, and it finds the cell that is dying. Of course, the, the blood from the ears. Uh, it goes directly from the ears to the brain and regulates the temperature of the brain, you know, so that's a part of what our ears do, you know, so if it's cold outside and our brain's hot, we, you know, it knows how to do that. So we have to keep a perfect temperature, but the, the blood that's going in there is now supercharged with energy. The, the brain, every, every part of the body is always rebuilding right at about 50 million cells per second. We're, we're dying and being reborn, dying and being reborn all the time. But if we could take the brain cells that are dying prematurely, or that because of there's a lot of different reasons, right? Thoughts, traumas, or toxins, something's going on there with the brain. If we can deliver energy in there, now the brain in all the what we call neuroplasticity kicks in and the brain stays active. And we know that has to happen for especially for those of us that are getting better looking, more intelligent with age. We want to have a great brain to go along with that. And so, you know, when you think about light therapy. When I was in India just two years ago, there was a doctor of Vivek Sharma, and he was telling me that in the in their Vedas, which is their ancient text, they had something called chronos therapy. And he said they talked all about it. And what they would do is they would have, if you had a traumatic brain injury, like if you had an injury to your head, or if you were having mental issues, you your the treatment was to go out two hours before sunrise because you would get the special light from the sun. Well, we now know that's when the most infrared light hits the planet. Hmm. And that's the kind of light that most people use for like traumatic brain injuries and that. But there's a lot of, there's a big history about energy and light and, and how that works with the brain. So I went on way too long, but that's how, that's how it goes. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, there's so much that, that goes into it. So, so you've been doing this for a long time. And I, I think you're also very active in the research side, right? So to validate what, what you're really trying to achieve. So what have you seen on the research side? Well, we, we have an incredible, we, we just published our 11 research papers that, that finished over the last two years. Um, it's now up on Amazon as a book because our doctors wanted it for their waiting room. 
but the, the, there's a few that I want to mention here that make mm -hmm. a difference. One is concussions. Once we do the, mm -hmm. we did a big study in Michigan. We took our doctor, his name is Dr. Ted Arkefeld. He took every child in the school, in the high school that got a concussion. So whether you were a cheerleader, a football player, didn't matter. Everyone went through his protocol and he's a good doctor. So they got, they got the care they needed, but 50% of them got brain tapped. The other didn't. And then we followed them for one year after treatment. So it wasn't just during the treatment. We documented everything. We did seven different neurological tests at the end of a year. How long was the treatment? The treatment is about six weeks. Okay. But it really depended upon when they go back to play. Like, the, I don't know if you've ever heard of the P300 in the brain. There's a, it's an evoked potential that you can't fake. It's not like HRV where you can alter your breathing and change the score. The brain has this in what, what we did was we measured their brains before their season started. So we knew their brain, what their normalized brain would look like as far as a Wabi score, which is the piece of equipment uses QEG. And then once they got hit, then you could measure it and there's a voltage, the voltage goes down. And, and that shows up also as heavy delta activity in the brain. So their brain's trying to shut down so it can reboot and, and fix itself. It's self-healing. But it, of course, we don't do that. We just go, go, go. We don't do any of the healing part of it. So what, what he did when, when we were studying them, so some people got more than six weeks because they had a more severe problem. But after their one year after their treatment, whatever that was, they went back and did all of the neurological testing to see what happened, did questionnaires. Uh, the worst that they did, BrainTap's group had 30% less headaches than the other, but everything else was between 50 and 70% more uh, improvement for the group that used BrainTap. And so what we were trying to show was recovery mm -hmm. is so important. You know, of course, we have to, if you have to have surgery, you have to have some kind of metal, medical procedure, that's okay. But what are you going to do to recover? The faster you can recover, you know, start recovery, the better off you are. So what we showed was if they took the time after their neuro treatment, which the doctor was doing his work, um, then they just took 20 minutes and did brain tap. It made a significant difference. So we really want to change the way people think about concussion care yeah. and how that works. So that's, that's, that's one of the remarkable. ones we just released. And What's it's that? only six weeks, maybe, you know, some took, you know, eight weeks and it's a, it's a once a day. They only did it during their therapy sessions. So um, they would come into the clinic three times a week. Wow. Three times a week for six weeks, maybe a little more. And then a year later, they're seeing a significant functional benefit. Yeah. We yeah. had uh, the other study I'd like to tell people about was we did a study with uh, women, 55, 65 years old. They were all diagnosed. You had to be diagnosed by your medical doctor that you had dementia. We had them do the Cambridge science testing, which is an online test that, that tells us if they, if they have cognitive decline. They all did. Uh, they weren't Alzheimer's. These were dementia patients. So it's, uh, and, and then what we did was we did the QEG readings on them. And what we noticed was they had the same brains as an ADD child. Their left hemisphere was moving slower than their right. And so we developed a series with BrainTap called The New Mind. And that's because the equipment we were using was called the new mind. So we called the series that. And what we did was we sped up the left hemisphere. We slowed down the right hemisphere. They did that one time a day. Now this group took home the brain tap because we, we, I don't think you could make that change with just three times a week. You might be able to, but I said, we need to get it, get them home with it, see what happens. So they were doing morning sessions, which we call digital coffee. We have uh, sessions that wake up the brain, the brain wave we're trying to train in the morning is called SMR, sensory motor rhythm. And that, that brainwave actually has to do with this, the distributor system. So a lot of people think they lose their balance because they're getting older and they're losing muscle. But we showed in one study that it's not that, it, that's part of it. But the biggest part of it is you're, use, you're missing that brainwave, the SMR brainwave. Once you train to that brainwave, people had better stability, more strength, and uh, better cognitive repair. So what we did, we, everything was tested. They went back to their doctor after six weeks. We already knew the results because we saw their brain scans. We had them do the cognitive testing. They were no longer on the dementia scale. Every one of them, their doctor said, if you'd have came in like this six weeks ago, I'd have never diagnosed you with, with dementia. What are you doing? And when they said, oh, we're using this machine called the brain tap, every one of their doctors said, no way, that, that's not it. What else did you do? <laughs> because they, they just don't, they don't think like 
you know, it could be that easy. Now we did a one year study after that. They own the equipment, right? They continue to get better. Hmm. So the, you know, you can only get so, so good. We, we have a way to measure giving it a number uh, from one to 100 on our neuro scan, our neuro check technology. And every person in the study on an energy basis where we could measure energy across the hippocampus was below 20% of their brain's potential. After the six weeks, they were all above 60%. And now most of them are around 70%. And now we're doing a bigger study at Seminole College where they, you know, we, we did the golf program there. I don't know, maybe I should, since I'm mentioning that, the, the college had us come in and work with their golf team. They were the national champions uh, three years ago. Now they're national champions three years in a row. We actually showed that we improved their alpha score, which has to do with focus and concentration by 300%. And these are, uh, these are elite athletes, golfers. And so they already had a great focus, but we were still able to improve it 300%. And now they use it. If you go to Seminole College's website, they gave a page to BrainTap mm -hmm. because they use BrainTap now to recruit people into the college. And the, they, the way they do this is they tell them that they're working with their mental health because mental health is such a big deal right now in college. I mean, we had our, 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 the neurophysiology department in Brazil at um, the college that our science officer was with, uh, Dr. Sidral, they actually are naming their neurocenter BrainTap Neurocenter hmm. because of the results we gave them with all their students. And they're, they're doing, uh, the government paid $250,000 to do a uh, digital drug study there. And it's, it's going fantastic. So the guys, he really wants to get into showing people that they can take, they can do this with their own neuropharmacy, not with Walgreens, you know, or the corner drugstore. Right. You can get your brain right. So we have a lot of research. I mean, we just finished 11. We have 12 studies going on right now. We're doing two studies with PTSD in the military. Um, you know, these poor guys and gals, they, they come home, you know, they've been three and four times in, yeah. in war situations. I mean, their, their brain doesn't know what side's up. That's so really fantastic. You're mentioning all these conditions. I know there are, I think, something like 1,400 different sessions on the BrainTap app, right? Yeah. So, so with different conditions, like the ones you mentioned uh, for dementia patients or PTSD patients, so they, there are different sessions that are particularly tailored to their condition, correct? Yes, we have, yeah, it's all about neuroplasticity. So there's got to be enough. Most series are seven to, well, our weight loss series has over 200 sessions. So because it's dependent upon what your issue is, like if you have a somebody sabotaging your weight loss or, or if you can't say no on the weekends, you know, we have different sessions for that. But most of the programs are seven to 14 weeks. Uh, they have that protocol that they would, they would listen to. Yeah. So, so the, the dementia, just for people who are curious, which sessions are these that you, you will be recommending people to use? If you can get your brain scan, we could recommend others. I'll say ah, that. But if, if, you're, if you're just thinking, hey, I've got cognitive decline, then we recommend three times a day. First thing in the morning, you do one of our wake up programs. Or if you go to our power user, there's one called AM. Mm. And then, but if you want to just do a meditation without any words, now, words are important because they can change up to 2,300 gene expressions. Is, you know, if you're using, we only use positive information. We're not scaring people with negative conditioning. <laughs> but the, the morning session is important because we got to regulate that brain as soon as they wake up. If, in, and before they do coffee or anything like that, we don't want any stimulants. We want the brain to start to learn to regulate on its own. Mm -hmm. And then in the afternoon, when the body naturally becomes tired, you know, most people don't know this, but at two o'clock every day, around the world, wherever you're at, doesn't matter if you're in China, US, Brazil, wherever, if it's two o'clock there, your temperature is dropping about two degrees. That's just the way that we're then at night at two o'clock, it increases two degrees. That's why people wake up sometimes in the middle of the night. Well, that's because our body's going through this cycle of energy exchange. And so when we have that biological low, unfortunately, most people in America go get coffee, tea and chocolate, you know, all the things that we don't wanna do, we should be doing a meditation. So we have sessions they do in the afternoon. Those sessions, we recommend they do the brain fitness series. Mm. In that brain fitness series, there's two different versions. There's ones we call single voice, which is where just like any other meditation. And then there's some we call dual voice, which kind of freaks people out at first because <laughs> I'm, I'm speaking in one ear. Like when I talk to the right, the right ear, the left brain lights up. 
And when I do this at a seminar, I have a track where I don't have any, I only have the voice coming into the right ear and then the left ear. And we have somebody hooked up to QEG and we're looking at the screen and I'll say, you're wondering why we're doing that. And what happens is for about two minutes, the brain will light up the left, light up the right, light up the left. It'll keep going back and forth. And about two minutes into it, the brain just goes, what the hell? It stays open. <laughs> So it, it basically just, we're teaching the brain that under stress, it doesn't have to shut down. What happens to most people, they don't realize this, but under stress, when your brain shuts down, you don't get access to all your creativity, all your logical thinking. It would be like the world shutting down and half the world's computing power shuts off. That's what happens to our brain under stress, but we can train the brain. That's what martial arts is all about. Um, things like uh, yoga, you know, breath work. They're all about keeping the even though a lot of people teaching it don't even know that but what happens is it it really works to balance the brain that that's so, so funny because i i like the dual voice and it mm -hmm. kind of is it, it, it kind of scrambles my brain i i want to hear everything so i'm trying to hear the left but i'm also trying to hear the right so i'm going back and forth so so you're saying at one point the brain just accepts does that mean yeah. the brain hears everything it it, it yes. hears all the remember the brain is the brain is listening to 25,000 pieces of information. That's right. nothing for the brain. Imagine right now it's collecting data from 75 trillion cells in your body, keeping the pH balance of your blood, helping you to breathe 21,000 times a day. And those are only a few little things it's doing. You know, that part of your mind or brain can do such incredible things. So what we're doing is we're, what I used to tell people was I'm teaching you to be in a stress state, but feels good. So <laughs> then when you get into a stress state in the world, you can still feel good because hmm. the brain will go, oh, I can figure that out. This was difficult, you know, hearing all these voices going on. And but but so we need and part of it is just keeping those neurons firing. You know, our our brain, unfortunately, people think when they're born, they're like an empty slate and they fill up the brain. That's not true at all. Now neuroscience tells us when you're born, you're fully connected. I mean, I know you you probably speak more than one language, right? You speak a few languages. Our science officer, Francisco, speaks six languages. When we were going through uh, India, we're walking out, and he starts talking to this person in Hindi. And I said, Francisco, when did you learn Hindi? He said, just since we've been here. And I said, how'd you do that? He also knows how to speak Mandarin and a couple of, and I said, he goes, well, I speak six languages, so I just pick up languages really easy because the circuit that learns languages for most of us, your, yours is still open if you have two, two or more. But like for me, I only learned one language. And so my brain shut down. It said, you don't need that circuit anymore. You're with your child. <laughs> you know, so, you know, that's how it really works. The more we use it when we're younger, that's why the kids that get, you know, special, special training when they're younger and get the attention, their brain stays fit for their whole life. Because after about eight years old, the remodeling of the brain stops and you're stuck with, you know, you can still change it, of course, we can adapt it, but it's not as easy because, and I think the main reason is up to that time, we're mostly theta. We're mostly theta and delta. But as soon as we get more alpha, beta, and we start to read and do those kind of things, our brain just starts to become fixed in its wiring. And then it takes effort to make that neuro change happen. Hmm. It can happen, but it takes energy to do it. Yeah. But you've seen in your research, basically, the brain tap device can help enhance the, the neuroplasticity, right? The fact that oh, people yeah, the, are the, recovering. I, yeah, I forgot to tell you on the dementia study, we were measuring neuroplasticity. And the average neuroplastic change was 49% in six weeks. Wow. So that blew people away. And of course, we don't know every neuron, you know, it's, it's measured in energy. So we know that if they know how much energy the average neuron fires. And so they can, uh, one thing that's interesting, because I'm always interested in ancient traditions and how we can make it modern technology. So uh, we just published a paper that was published by PubMed now, if, if someone looks it up. I did a pranayama breathing research with Ames Institute, the All Indian Institute of Medical Sciences, where we did pranayama breathing and we matched the two hemispheres just like we did in our study. It just took somebody doing breath work five times a day, which in America, that's not going to happen, you know, but in India it did, <laughs> you know, so because they don't have the money for the brain tap. So they're going to go ahead and th there are ways to do it. We also showed that by doing martial arts in, in primarily uh, Tai Chi, which is easy movements, that you can also reconnect the brain. So when people think they're just out there dancing, they're literally working out their nervous system and getting it to optimize. And that's why they have great memories. You know, they're, they're exercising that nervous system. 
Yeah, it's so interesting. Or even, you know, Tai Chi is, is one form of Qigong, I mean, or one mm. form of uh, martial art, I guess it could, mm. it could be because yeah. it's part of martial art. And I remember when I was growing up in China, they were always saying how if you're a little kids, so you can play piano and become smarter, or you can do martial art and become smarter. You know, each one teach you, teaches you your discipline and does something for your brain is, is really interesting. So yeah. I was amazed when I went to Wudang Mountain, uh, where they were, uh, Qigong was invented in Tai Chi. Um, I went up there for a month. It was, a, it was awesome. And they had the kids there. The kids were all learning because they were like adopted or they were left there at the temple. They either had to become a monk or a Tai Chi master, you know, in, or martial. They did Kung Fu too, I think. But they, they became really good at that. And the, they were saying that they do that so that they can meditate so they can get into that state but they all learn the Tao, which is a humongous book because on rainy days if they if they don't go out and exercise they have to read the Tao. so they read <laughs> okay. they do a lot of exercises <laughs> very few, few, few chinese people have ever read the Tao, but um but it's very revered so yeah. i, I want to go back to the the routine you said three times a day we were talking about the for the dementia patients i'm sure but for everybody who wants to enhance their brain fitness so you're saying in the morning do an, one of the a.m routines or wake up um mm -hmm. session and then midday, you know, when you're going through the 2 p.m. slump, maybe do the brain fitness. And then you, you want to do a third one around yeah. what time? The third one, usually people listen right before they go to sleep. So when people go, how much time does it take? It doesn't take any time. Just reach over, press play, go to sleep. Because our Delta sessions start out at a beta frequency, which is around 14 cycles per second. Because we should be calming down by then, hopefully. And then it's going to slowly take them down and drop them off, actually, at a 0.5. And it's just going to leave them there. So we're going to do a lot of Delta training. Like some people will actually, they'll trick out their, uh, like their bio straps or their aura rings. Because if you do a, if you do a six, we have a 60 minute Delta deep Delta training and it will actually score 60 minutes of deep sleep. You know, when people are, so they'll trick their device, you know, instead of doing it the correct way. But, <laughs> but what we, what we know for sleep is you need at least two hours of deep sleep and two to three hours of REM sleep to really make those neurotransmitters. Most people don't realize during sleep is the only time your brain detoxes. There's a system of the body that's called the glialymphomic system that before 2015, if you look at the physiology books, there's no lymphatic system above the neck. They, because it only turns on during level four sleep. Hmm. So once you get level four sleep, it starts to detox. They call them Delta burst. So it does this micro cleaning that happens. They wrote about it in American scientific in 2016 in the March um, article there. And it's, it's, it's super incredible when you, when you read about it now, now most every neuroscientist is talking about the glialymphomic system because they didn't know how to clean the brain. How do we get the brain clean? So we have to have that deep sleep. So once you have that deep sleep, your body builds up those neurotransmitters. You wake up in the morning, you should be energized. So the morning sessions are only 10 minutes. You shouldn't have to relax. Hopefully you had a good night's sleep. They're meant to energize your nervous system. The middle of the day is meant to reboot your nervous system. And the ones at night are meant to calm down the nervous system to put it into a state of sleep. Hmm. I am curious though, at night I've tried it because the light that's shining in my eyes it just feels feels a little bit more activating. Ten percent of the people can't do it at night. They just do it with the earphones. I see. Uh, the the whole reason is the photaic energy. You are getting energy, but it does take energy to sleep. So as long as you're eating properly and you know getting, some people don't have enough energy to sleep. You know, you you measure their brain like I'll they they can't sleep because their their body knows you've got to get up and get some energy going, or you, because the brain takes a lot of energy. And especially if you just watch TV or with, we're under dirty lights and you basically you're all keyed up and then you try to go in and lay down and go to sleep, you, that kind of energy doesn't calm you down. So yeah, some people do, like even uh, my wife, Cynthia, she can't do it at night after six o'clock because she's uh, she just is too high strung, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. I, I have no trouble falling asleep. So uh, but I, 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 but then I, I've seen in my clinic people who have a great deal of trouble falling asleep, have you know chronic insomnia, and the, with that light shining in their eyes, they relax and then they can fall asleep. So that's pretty remarkable. So that means just our brains are all set up very differently. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it at, at uh, shows when somebody says, I don't know if that'll work. I have insomnia or whatever. And then we have to wake them up after they've done <laughs> two sessions <laughs> so they, because the brain's the, the whole thing is about the nervous system gets locked when you're stressed out, it gets stuck. We call it sympathetic escape. So when the nervous system, it's like, they're in there fighting a battle, but nobody sees it out here. <laughs> you know, it's all going on in here. And so, but as soon as we can liberate, I tell people, it's not always your psychology. It could be your physiology too. Mm -hmm. So that's why you got to work on both of them. You can't just do uh, one without the other. So, but if you're so over time, the stress builds up, like what's happened over the last two years, they know the a neuroscientist would say our brain shrinks three quarters of an inch just with a year of stress. So I wonder what happened to all these people that didn't do anything about their brain fitness during this time, because if you just relied on the news, your brain's really fried, you know, because there's no, there's no sunshine there. Yeah. And I, I know you can't make any claims, you know, we, we in the holistic health space, we all know, you know, that's a big deal, you know, no claims, but I'm sure, you know, in your, you know, decades of practice, you know, in, in clinical aspects, and now you've seen, you know, so many people have used brain tap, what some of the, of the really interesting results and, and just, uh, you know, kind of, uh, healing yeah. journeys you've seen. Yeah, we've had so many great miracles happen. Um, people can just go hashtag brain tap. They'll see a whole bunch of them online. People are, they love just telling their stories. I, that's one thing about social media that they just love shit in their laundry, but the <laughs> you know, telling people what's going on. But there was a, there was a woman down in uh, San Diego just recently her, they haven't heard her speak in three years. They said she has really bad Alzheimer's. And we had done the Alzheimer's summit. And they said, what do you think would this work for my mother? And I said, well, you own the equipment, just go do it, see what happens. You know, it's not going to cost you anymore. Within two weeks, she hadn't spoken three years. Within two weeks, she was speaking and they were recording her life history. Mm. And they, their mother was just, I mean, never seen it before. I had, um, we have people that have, I just got a letter from somebody who thanked me. She was going through hospice care and they used it there just to calm her uh, fear of dying and, and helping her through that. And, and she wanted to make sure that her family knew to tell Dr. Porter that he helped her out oh. because we, we do a lot with pain control. You know, when you, when you downregulate beta, you don't have as much pain and discomfort. So we, we work a lot with, so a lot of the um, hospice nurses will have brain tap and will share it with, with some of the members of, of their group. So just to help them relax and do their thing. But I think the, the biggest thing that, that I like to hear is like when, whether it be an, an athlete or a young person says, you know, I didn't think I was that smart. And since I've been doing it, you know, my grades have improved, my focus, my concentration. Um, we used to do a lot more of that. That's how I started. I, I used to do what they called SALTS, Society of Accelerated Learning and Teaching. I used to be one of their presenters. So we used to go out and teach uh, kids how to think faster and better, you know, kind of like what Jim Quick does out there in the world. Mm -hmm. But um, we were using his techniques, but we were doing similar. My dad, my dad had a whole series with Silva that you taught how to think quicker and, um, you know, memorize how to improve your memory and focus. And I think uh, what I like to see a lot is people's confidence come back. Because it, it, let's say you had cancer and you had to go through cancer treatment. After you're done, a lot of people fear their body, they think their body is is not, you know, basically they don't believe their body's going to be there for them. They think their body somehow turned against them instead of it just being a series of events, you know, it could be their diet or, you know, whatever genetics. But when, once they get that confidence back and they realize, Hey, everybody has the opportunity to live or die every day. Let's live to the fullest and really starts to get them to, to live the life they were really designed to have. You know, that's, that's what I like to see. And we, you know, we have so many, great stories. Um, I mean, even the, one of my favorite in sports was uh, Corey Anderson, who's an MMA fighter. They had him on ESPN and he had just knocked his guy out in like, I, I guess it was 34 seconds or something like that. It was a really big win. And they said, how did you, you know, what were you thinking when you're out there? He says, well, I knew I was going to do it because I was doing my brain tap in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the room before I came out here. And it was a session called step into the spotlight. And he said, when I stepped in the spotlight, I saw myself knock him out at 34 seconds. And so, I mean, that kind of thing happens you know, all the time, because once you start to believe it, then you're going to achieve it in your life. And a lot of people can't get into that physiological state. They, that state of disbelief is far more powerful to them 
than the state of belief in themselves. So I think just harmonizing that, you know, the, the physiology and the psychology together, when that galvanizes and people realize they're a powerful force mm-hmm. in their own life for health, yeah. you know, great things happen. Yeah. So of course, you know, I, I'm extremely interested in, in brain health. You know, I almost went into to get a PhD in neuroscience and then I went into medicine. I specialize in psychiatry and then, you know, then in addiction medicine. So now I'm doing regenerative medicine. And so I really want to help regenerate, regenerate the brain, but the brain is one of the most challenging organs to help. And so for, especially for these degenerative um, neural conditions like Alzheimer's, like ALS, like Parkinson's, MS, um, or even in pediatric populations, autism, ADHD. So these are really, really challenging. So you mentioned good results in Alzheimer's. What about in the other categories that I kind of talked about? Well, we have, we have a great doctor out in California. Her name is Joquita Handy. And we did a study with her with, all, with autism. Mm. And what we found was the autistic population doesn't have alpha. So we, we developed a series for them that's called the Children's Opportunity for Brilliance. That's the program. And what we do so is I tell under, a story. Is it under Children's Opportunity? Is that what yes. it's, okay. Yeah, it's called, I think it's called Children's, Children's Health now or something like that. Okay. But there's 43 sessions now. Wonderful. And when we, when we did the research with her, we only had 10. And there are stories that I tell you know, that the kids listen to, but they're getting the brainwave entrainment. The incredible part of that one that really, I mean, nobody could, when we had the meeting with the parents after when we had, were re- releasing the study, 90% of them were speaking at the end of this six week study because they had, tw- as soon as they were up to 23% alpha activity, they started speaking. And uh, that's what you need to communicate. Like when somebody has a fear of public speaking out there in the world, it's because they heightened their beta because the fear and their alpha collapses, and then they can't they can't speak because they that that's the brainwave they need. You know, the fear takes over and runs the system. So once they once these kids who had that, they could already think it, but now they could communicate it. And what we found was that once they started in, so there's only 100% energy in the brain, right? So we want to see about 45% beta and about 30% alpha and about 10% theta, you know, and it kind of goes like a mountain like that. And these kids were about 70 to 80% delta. And they had, they would have high theta in regards to that, about 15% of that. And then they have 50% beta, there'd be no alpha. So Mm -hmm. the, the brainwaves work more like an analog clock. They don't work like digital. You can't just go from beta to theta. You got to go through alpha. So what would happen to the kids is they would, when they're stimming, you know, if you've ever seen a, a, a kid that starts stimming, they're in high beta. But then when they go to disassociate, and they go, oh, that's just Jimmy. He's got him. He's in a mood. Well, he's in high theta. They don't have any way to mitigate those two emotions. Also, alpha, we found that they were no longer hitting the walls, hitting people, being destructive, because they could tell the difference between themselves and the world. Without alpha, you, you can't discern that. You, you don't have that uh, creative faculty to say, this monitor is not me. And so when they're, when they're being abusive to other people, they're not doing that on purpose. They're doing that because they're trying to test their limits of their, you know, of their boundaries. It's fascinating. How long does the result last? You know, for a kid, you know, autism is a very chronic long-term condition. We did a six month washout. They still had their 23% alpha, but the equipment's so inexpensive that the parents own it. And you have to do something. It doesn't have to be brain tap, but you have to do something. So I always tell people, you need to get very interested in Tai Chi, yoga, or dance. I mean, even if you can't afford a dance class, just turn on the radio, shut your blinds and dance (laughs) as if nobody's watching, you know, because that's going to, you have to move and breathe to get the nervous system going, you know? So you either have to do it in the way they would do it in ancient traditions. Think about it. If you were in an ancient tribe and you'd come to the fire at night and they'd have their ceremonies, you'd be up dancing and do that's all about getting nervous system active because they were, they're stressed to death. I mean, they're out there life and death every day. We just have to make it to the grocery store and pick up the food. You know, they had to go get it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so th- there was a lot of stress back then. So they always, if you look at the way the ancient cultures would de-stress, we need more of that or, the brain's just going to dysregulate again. And this is something for those out there that know about gut health. Uh, if you have leaky gut, you have a leaky brain because we have, we have a brain biome and a gut biome and our heart actually regulates both of them. So if we can, if we can tune into our hearts and, you know, basically relax, then the nervous system knows how to self-regulate. 
But if we stay in a state of hypertension and stress and anger and fear, fear is probably the biggest deterrent to health in our in our in our bodies because you know fear just puts a dead hold stop to every function because our body thinks you know there's a tiger or whatever's going to attack us and so the body says we need to flee you know and that's a whole different set of um neuroactivity than it would be to sit by the ocean and have a you know have a cold one with a friend or something you know there's there's a big difference there Right. I'm trying to think of the mechanism of how this, you know, device can can promote su such, you know, drastic benefits. Um, and so the mechanism must must be pretty sophisticated, must be complex. Um, so we're changing the brain waves, but we're probably turning on different growth factors and enhancing mm -hmm. neuroplasticity. We're enhancing the energy of the brain, but there's probably a lot more. Once we get the study back from Brazil, they're doing all the markers. We're actually in a double blind placebo controlled study, just like, uh, just like they would do with pharmacology. And they've already gathered all the data. And Francisco said, we're going to be blown away because what they want to do in Brazil is they want to replace opioids with brain tap. Because the, the reason we created this back in the 80s was not all the reasons we just talked about. It was all for pain control. Mm. Because we were doing biofeedback to get people out of pain. If you can get rid of your headaches. If you can make your hands warm, you won't have a headache. That's a biofeedback technique. So you can do that through breathing. We were doing all these exercises to try to get people out of pain. Of course, then came along all the pain medicine. They said, screw that. You know, this is easy. I'm just going to take a pill. But now we're finding that people are not getting the same results from the pills or they're so addictive the positive well, benefits many of have whatever. died from it so yeah mm -hmm. so that's where that's where we're at i think that we're just going to see more and more the body the, the science actually is called frequency following response every cell if you think of every cell every cell has something they call the cell danger response or the healing response so every cell is like its own universe so what as as things when it for instance, the frequency of a 5G tower. The reason that's a problem for our cells is it's 50 million pulses a second. Our body has never seen that before. But 100 pulses per second, it has. Mm. Four, four pulses per second, it has. Uh, a frequency of the ocean, 10 hertz. Those are frequencies. So everything appears to be solid in this world, but I'm sorry, it's not. It's, it's like, it's like an on off again universe. And it's all based on it's, you know, a lot of the, the, of course, the Rishis and things would say it's all smoke and mirrors. This is all an illusion. And it's an illusion because we, we manifested in these ways. Now we've all agreed on what we see here and experience. But the reality is there's more space in our universe than there is solidness. Mm -hmm. and, and we make it we make it so and, you know, we, we bring about our own limitations, or we bring about our own grace. So, you know, we, we want to stay in that, that perpetual state of grace that allows our self-healing, self-replicating nervous system to, to heal us. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, I think you briefly mentioned weight loss. So that's interesting that you have, what, 40 sessions, you know, in the brain tab just for weight loss. I mean, that's, yep. that's really interesting. Yeah, we have 26 that are dealing with the nutrition classes. My brother Michael's the nutritionist, so we put together 26. So you learn those, you learn it by experiencing it through the relaxation response. So instead of you, it's not the old school learning. This is we call it the quantum super learning advantage at, at Quantum University, where I where I teach. And it's a way to get it in there. And then we have over 200 sessions on the emotional reasons people eat. We all have emotional triggers, you know, and some people are more predisposed to weight. My dad was 400 pounds. My mother was 350. So I obviously have this. I have the genetic makeup to be really, you know, big. So but my brother, Michael, who's my brother, you know, he's, you know, probably 40 pounds lighter than me. He's also he's about five, six. But they when you he's he's super healthy. He, you know, he, we used to say that, you know, he, he hadn't had a candy bar since a freshman in high school, you know, but now he does occasionally because he has kids and things when they were growing up, he would, you know, celebrate their birthdays and do things like that with them. But he's, he's health minded, you know, we've got to take care of these bodies. They're I just you, not. You, you know. mentioned that there was a study that actually did brain tap for weight loss. Was there oh yes, yeah. We have it? we have several studies that do that. We have we have two that are being that are being published right now. One is from a Kim White out of California as well. She lives pretty close to where you're at there in LA. Um, what we do is we show how any weight loss program could be enhanced 
with brain tap. We did, we did do one study with a group of chiropractors where we didn't have a, a meal plan, anything. We didn't tell them anything. We just said, listen to this once a week, we're going to weigh you and see what happens. They didn't even know they had a weight loss program. And the average weight loss was just under a pound a week. Mm. And that has to do with stress. So one key for the listener is one stressful event produces as much sugar from your liver as a candy bar. So when you think about stress, when people go, how did I get high blood sugar? I don't even eat candy. Well, mm. are you stressed? Because your body produces its own sugar. We, we, we need very little sugar, you know, from the external sources. You know, our body needs, you know, ketones more or fat. You know, that's what our brain needs fat and, and, and ketones to, to really feed and survive. It doesn't need uh, Pringles or a Milky Way bar or something like that. Yeah, well, that's uh, sobering to know how, how much stress can increase your blood sugar. <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess you don't need the dessert. You just need to be a little stressed. <laughs> <laughs> Turn on the news and you just ate a candy bar. Turn on the news. <laughs> yeah, that's scary. Yeah, this is so fascinating. I, I you know, I, I'm really excited. I've been introducing this to our patients and, and seeing, you know, all kinds of benefits and how it just, I have a lot of high strong patients who, who are really into anti-aging, you know, really want to live forever. So, but a lot of these people are, you know, on the, on the highly stressed side because they're so, uh, I, I guess, ambitious, right? Ambitions mm -hmm. par partially was driving them to, to want to live forever. Um, right. So definitely tuning up their brain is, is really crucial, you know, in this journey to help the, their, them live long. The one nice thing is that in the ancient traditions, the tribes, they kept the wisdom with the elders. So that tells us our brain is designed to live into old age and function. Mm. So we just have to, you know, look at 21st century man and see what we did wrong, which we know is <laughs> mostly our foods, right? Our yeah. food is terrible, our sitting on our butts terrible, you know, things like that. They say sitting is the new smoking, you know, so we need to get our movers, our nervous system moving again, and we'll have highly functioning. We did a study with uh, centurions, just a couple case studies, though, but huh. we're adding those up as we get more centurion that we can work with, and their brain did improve. So it, it doesn't, you don't have to have a young brain. The brain is kind of like the liver. I tell people it can rebuild itself at any age because it's a very important, obviously it's the most important organ in the body without it, you know, without that in the heart and the digestive system, those three brains, you can't really function. So. Well, Dr. Porter, you are bringing so much hope to so many people. So many people who don't know how to deal with the stress, who are struggling with sleep, who are, you know, their the brain is not optimized. And, you know, this is, this is going to just make the happiness level of, of people go up, you know, this is very much needed. So, so thank yeah. you. Any, any parting wisdom you want to share? Yeah, on that, I, there is a documentary I'm in called the biohacking happiness that I just filmed in, in Salt Lake City. So that's something, but I think the wisdom is that you are far greater than anyone's told you. And you have the capacity to change any part of your life and don't ever let anybody tell you any different. So, you know, the, the old saying that uh, change is mandatory, growing up is optional, you know, so you want to keep that childlike mind and, you know, have fun, laugh and enjoy yourself. That's wonderful. I, and I think you live that way yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you so much for your wisdom and for your incredible work and for what you're bringing to to the world um changing so many lives so thank you it's, it's been an honor interviewing you yeah well thank you for interviewing me and getting the message out we want a better billion brains and we need everyone's help out there because we can we can make a difference we don't have to have millions of people with alzheimer's and dementia we can we can work on that brain fitness and have a very fit healthy population at any age that's so amazing you know i love hearing that i'll tell you a story how um i went to i finished my um psychiatry residency program in 2008 so i remember in 2006 my attending who is a geriatric psychiatrist so he works in a an alzheimer's ward at the va at veterans hospital mm -hmm. and he was so excited about you know curing alzheimer's he said the government has devoted billions and billions of dollars to cure Alzheimer's. He said, within 10 years, we're going to find a cure for Alzheimer's. I'm certain of it. And that was 2006. So 2016, of course, has passed. Now it's 2022. We're nowhere near finding anything of a cure 
for Alzheimer's because the, fo the focus of finding a drug, that is the wrong focus. You've got to look at the body holistically right. and you've got to utilize the energy side of who we are as human beings. And I think that's what you've tapped into, which is, yeah. it, is, is, is the pioneering work in medicine. Yeah. Well, there's so many things we can do to rebuild our natural, our body's natural ability to heal, you know, and it doesn't, it doesn't come from a can bottle or a wrapper, you know, we have to get it naturally. And, yeah. you know, it can be as simple as just, you know, be more youthful. You know, there are, there are a lot of ways we can trigger, you know, even stem cell production in our body, you know, in a healthy way by smiling and having fun and enjoying ourselves rather than, you know, I tell people I'd rather, I, somebody once told me, he said, you're too damn happy. And I said, well, I said, <laughs> I said, well, I'd rather be happy and then be disappointed every once in a while than wake up disappointed and be happy. Never, you know, there are people <laughs> that's the way they live their life. They wake up and they're just pissed off. You know, it's better to be excited about life, have some fun and, and enjoy yourself. And, and then it doesn't matter. I mean, if you want to live to be 120, 240, whatever the age, you, you know, the, you want to live a life that's worth living, you know, that's each right. day. You know, so right. I, I think that that's what we're all about. There's a sickness care society. And then there's this wellness care society. And, and I want to be on the wellness care. You know, we all need, but if I break my leg, I know where to go to get that done. But I'm not going to go to them for any long term medical device, because mm -hmm. they don't know. They're only looking at curing a, a a disease or a problem with the body. And we're going to look at the body holistically and say, Hey, it's self-healing, self-replicating. What do we need to provide it so that it can do its job? Yeah. You know, the I'm, I'm seeing more and more yeah. medicine moving up the stage because what I tell, you know, what I've realized is that medicine has been so stuck on the chemistry level. So the f physics of, you know, on, of healing, of medicine, and that is way beyond what we're looking at little molecules running into each other, you know, the, this receptor, <laughs> you know, you know, lock and key system is so much more than that is so much more about waves, you know, about light and about just, you know, even sound energy, what the energy system can do. And that's what modern medicine has not tapped into. It doesn't want to think that way. It still wants to get stuck in the chemical level. But as soon as you move into the physics, and that's why, you know, I love the modern physicists. They're like, you know, they're like the, you know, the mystics, the modern mystics. Yep. And it's, you know, medicine's got to move into that stage because science has gotten that far. Medicine just have to catch up a little bit. Right. I think yeah. you're right on with that. So. Yeah, thank you again. Okay. Yeah. So um, then where can people find BrainTab? Like where, where can they uh, get this amazing device? Well, I think in your notes, you should put your, you have a link that we provided you. Give them a free book. When they do your free link, they'll get a free copy of my book. They can oh, download wonderful. it, learn a lot more about it. And they can also get 15 days free on the app. That's probably the best way for them to learn about it. And then from there, of course, they can always see where I'm at, at, at Dr. Patrick Porter, at Dr. Patrick Porter, and they can see me on social media and what I'm doing and hopefully come out and see me somewhere when I'm, when I'm traveling. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you again. And it's been a pleasure. All right, it's been a pleasure. Thank you.